And good morning or good afternoon to you, depending on whereabouts you are in the world. Uh, we're going to be covering two topics today, and a rather ambitious um, intention is to is to give you uh, a, a useful amount of information on both in 60 minutes. So this is what we're going to be discussing in terms of qualification, instrument qualification. Um, one of the things I'm hoping to do is to point you to the relevant guidance documents uh, in both qualification and validation um, uh, subjects. We'll talk about uh, the various aspects of uh, qualification and in particular we're going to look at some performance qualification tests for different HPLC modules um, to give you a, perhaps a better understanding of those. On then to method validation and what I'm not going to do in this session is, is to teach you what, what it says in the ICH guidance on method validation because you can read that for yourselves. What I'm hoping to do is to give you a bit of insight into so certainly I'll show you where to find that guidance but then phase appropriate method validation and experimental approaches to um, three validation elements that in my experience are often not performed very well. Okay so let's start off then with HPLC instrument qualification. Um, so we've got uh, a variety of guidance documents in the European Union. Uh, we have guidance around computerized systems in Annex 11 and in Annex 15, uh, qualification and validation. But there's nothing very much uh, by way of specific guidance in EU GMPs about analytical instrument qualification. So for that specific guidance, we turn to the United States Pharmacopeia which has a really useful general chapter, general chapter 1058, uh, and that gives us a, a really nice framework on which to plan validation activities based on a categorization of instruments in terms of their quality risk. So, um, this USP general chapter defines three categories of instrument, group A, group B, and group C, and the qualification effort in each of those groups is related to quality risk. Um, and the theory in this case is that the less that the, the less complex an instrument is, the lower the quality risk that it poses. So group A is the simplest sort of laboratory instrument, group C is the most complex. And the the validation activity appropriate to those quality groups varies of course in terms of complexity. And on the right hand side of this slide <clears throat> I've just shown an extract from ICHQ9, which deals with quality risk management. There's an awful lot of what we do these days in the pharmaceutical industry that takes a risk-based approach. So familiarity with this guidance would be incredibly useful. So if you're not familiar with ICHQ9, um, it's, it's available on the ICH website. If anybody, by the way, if anybody after today's seminar needs a copy of any of the documents I referred to or needs where to find the guidance documents that I've spoken about, um, do, do get in touch um, via, uh, via compliance trainings. So instruments in Group A are the simplest laboratory instruments, they're things like magnetic stirrers and vortex mix, mixers, and generally all we're required to do to qualify these instruments is to check visually that they do what it is that they're intended to do. For the next group of instruments, we, we add a little bit of complexity. These generally are instruments that are designed to measure something, uh, and these will require periodic calibration. And for, for these relatively simple measurement instruments, we would perform installation and operational qualification. Um, generally, of course, we recalibrate these instruments. pH meters are often calibrated at the time of use. Balances, we, uh, we perform an annual balance calibration, and that's supported by daily check weights to make sure that the calibration hasn't drifted between times. Group C, then, is the most complex type of instrumentation. Here we're talking about instruments that generally have computerized data, data systems associated with them. So these will include chrom chromatographic systems, mass spectrometers, spectrophotometers. And for these instruments, we require a full qualification approach. 